The sun blazed mercilessly over the rugged landscape of the Arabian Peninsula, casting long shadows on the parched earth. In the heart of this harsh land, a simmering feud was about to erupt into a conflict that would echo through the ages. Kulaib Ibn Rabi'a, the influential tribal chief and revered leader of the Banu Taglib, was a man of great power and pride. His authority was undisputed, and his decisions were final. One fateful day, while surveying his lands on horseback, he spotted a stray she-camel grazing near the border of his territory. Unbeknownst to him, this camel belonged to Basus, a woman of the Banu Bakr and kin to Jasus Ibn Murrah, the formidable chief of the Banu Sheban, a powerful subdivision of the Banu Bakr. Basus, a woman known for her spirited nature and deep loyalty to her tribe, had raised the she-camel from a calf. It was not just a possession, but a symbol of resilience and survival in the harsh desert. When news reached her that Kalib had shot her cherished camel with an arrow, her grief turned swiftly to rage. Basus, known for her skill in composing poetry that stirred hearts, penned a poignant and fiery poem that captured the injustice of her camel's death and the dishonor inflicted upon her tribe. Her words spread like wildfire through the tents and camps of the Banu Bakr. They reached Jasus Ibn Murrah as he sat in council with his chiefs under the shade of a date palm. Jasus, a man whose reputation for courage and leadership was matched only by his fierce sense of honor, listened intently as Basus's poem was recited with such passion that it ignited the hearts of those gathered. The insult to his kin and the pride of his tribe could not be ignored. In unbridled fury, Jasus gathered his closest warriors. They rode swiftly across the desert sands to confront Kulaib Ibn Rabia. The Banu Taglib, sensing the storm brewing, prepared for the inevitable clash. They knew the stakes. A single act of retribution could escalate into a cycle of bloodshed that would stain the sands of Arabia for generations. When Jasus and his warriors arrived at the camp of the Banu Taglib, tensions were already high. Kulaib, standing tall and resolute before his people, met Jasus's steely gaze with a mixture of defiance and caution. Words were exchanged, harsh and laden with the weight of pride and honor. In a swift and tragic turn, tempers flared. Amidst the chaos of shouting and brandished weapons, Jasus thrust his dagger into Kulaib's heart. The murder of Kulay Baibi and Rabia sent shockwaves through the Banu Taglib. Their leader, a man revered for his wisdom and strength, lay slain at the hands of their enemies. The tribe's blood boiled with a thirst for vengeance that demanded satisfaction. The call for retribution echoed through the tents and across the desert, stirring the Banu Taglib to action. The first major confrontation between the Banu Taglib and the Banu Sheban occurred on a day forever remembered as Yom al-Hazr, the Day of Confrontation. The Banu Taglib, fueled by grief and fury, launched a ferocious assault upon their rivals. The battle was brutal, marked by a flurry of arrows, the clash of swords, and the cries of the wounded and dying. Despite their initial victory, the Banu Taglib knew their enemies were numerous and relentless. The conflict escalated as neighboring tribes, drawn by ancient alliances and a thirst for glory, joined the fray. The Arab tribe of Zubaid, seeking to bolster their influence, allied briefly with the Banu Sheban. That led to skirmishes that resulted in no clear victory, but only heightened the tension and distrust between tribes. As the war dragged on, each side suffered significant losses. The Banu Taglib, driven by a fierce determination to avenge their fallen leader, pressed onward with relentless attacks. The Banu Sheban, equally determined to defend their honor and exact further reprisals, fought with a tenacity born of desperation and pride. The conflict reached a pivotal moment on Yom Allah Istirad, the day of retribution when the Banu Bakr achieved a significant victory by ambushing a contingent of Banu Taglib warriors who had ventured too far into enemy territory. The death of a notorious Banu Taglib commander, known for his cunning and ruthlessness, further inflamed tensions and deepened the cycle of violence. Years passed, 
and the unrelenting war took its toll on both tribes. Exhaustion and discontent began to seep into the ranks of the Banu Bakr. Some subdivisions, weary of the constant bloodshed and the toll it exacted on their families and resources, began to question the wisdom of continuing the conflict. They argued for peace, urging their leaders to seek a resolution that would spare further loss of life and restore honor through diplomacy rather than bloodshed. This internal dissent within the Banu Bakr threatened to tear the tribe apart from within. Uday Ibn Mura, a respected chief and cousin to Jassus, vehemently opposed any suggestion of peace. He saw it as a betrayal of their fallen kin and surrendering their hard-won honor. In his fury, Uday confronted those who advocated for peace, accusing them of cowardice and disloyalty to their tribe's legacy. The division within the Banu Bakr was deep and bitter, but amidst the turmoil, voices of reason emerged. Wearing of the endless cycle of vengeance and death, leaders from both sides sought a path to reconciliation. They knew continued conflict would weaken their tribes and leave them vulnerable to external threats. In an influential gathering beneath the open sky, chiefs and elders from the Banu Taglib and the Banu Bakr met to negotiate a ceasefire. The negotiations were tense and fraught with distrust. Still, the shared desire for peace and the recognition of their mutual losses ultimately prevailed. The war that had ravaged the Arabian Peninsula for years ended with a solemn oath of peace and reconciliation. Tribe members from both sides gathered to witness the signing of a treaty that would restore trade routes, allow for the exchange of goods and marriages, and establish mechanisms for resolving disputes peacefully. The scars of war remained etched upon the hearts and lands of both tribes. The once bustling trade routes bore the silent witness of battles fought and lives lost. Yet amidst the ruins of their conflict, a newfound respect and understanding began to emerge between the Banu Taglib and the Banu Bakr. They had learned the hard lessons of pride, vengeance, and the cost of honor paid in blood. The war between the Banu Taglib and the Banu Bakr became a tale of legend, passed down through generations as a cautionary tale of the power of words, the weight of pride, and the enduring quest for justice in the unforgiving deserts of Arabia. The land that had witnessed their strife now held the echoes of their battles, a testament to the fierce and unyielding spirit of the Arabian tribes and the enduring legacy of their quest for peace. If you enjoyed this video and found it insightful, we would love to hear your thoughts. Please like, subscribe, and leave a comment below. Your support helps us bring more engaging content to you. Thank you for watching.